Diamond Jim McDonald managed to last seven rounds, but he paid a heavy price. Chad is a good fighter, and he proved that he is a good champ, but I just feel it's my time now. Prince Charles Williams, as he's known in Philadelphia, is ready to be crowned king. His last defeat was four years ago to former world champion Marvin Johnson. Since that loss, he has climbed the light heavyweight ladder to become the number one contender in the world. It took Williams only two rounds to dispatch his last opponent. After a slow start in his career, Williams believes he has finally put it all together. So I feel this was my talent. I just found it out. And now it, it's paid off. It shows that I went on to become the uh, United States uh, light heavyweight champ, ranked number one in the world, getting ready to fight for the world title. And it's just, like I said, it's the dream of my life. Basically, I think I have my sights set on after beating Charles Williams, Tommy Hearns. I'm hoping that he'll come up to the light heavyweight division after he's victorious over one World Dan, if he is victorious, and uh, make me rich and give me the credibility I so dearly crave. Charles Williams, he is 21-4-2 with 13 KOs. He won the USBA title over James Salerno and now has his shot at the IBF World Championship. And he will be challenging Bobby Chez from One Oak, New Jersey. And there is Charles Williams from Mansfield, Ohio, now lives in Philadelphia and has indeed become a Philadelphia fighter. In those ring wars there, he has matured into a top flight contender. Well, Gil Clancy, let's talk about Bobby Chez. Bobby Chez is a, a young man who's had a certainly a, a, an odyssey of uh, unusual proportions all the way to this world championship. He was a middleweight. His only loss was to Mustafa Hamsho. He's now the light heavyweight champion of the world. Is he as good as any of the light heavyweight champions that we've seen in recent years? Well, Tim, tonight should be the night for Bobby Chez. He's a champion of the world, but I think this is the kind of a fight that can really have the boxing public discover him, move him up into that superstar status, the way a Marvin Hagler and a Tommy Hearns and a Ray Leonard are. He has a real, real tough opponent in front of him, which has to bring out the best in Bobby Chez. And if you bring out the best, they're really going to see something. And I, tonight is the night I think it's going to happen. 32 and 1. He started boxing when he was six years old. He wants Thomas Hearns. You heard him say that in the feature that we showed you about Bobby Chez just a few minutes ago. He hopes that Hearns will come back up to the light heavyweight ranks. Hearns is, of course, the WBC light heavyweight champion, having defeated Dennis Andres for that title. And Chez hopes his big money fight and his big prestige fight will be against Tommy Hearns if he can get by the man who calls himself Prince Charles Williams. A lot of fans here from New Jersey. Nicknamed Chappie on the back. Bobby Chez in the glitter of Las Vegas here, a sequin robe befitting the occasion. And in seeing uh, Bobby earlier this morning after the weigh-in, likewise poised, confident, and very relaxed. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Neither fighter had any problem at all making the weight. You can see they're well under the 175 limit. Each 25 years of age, the height advantage clearly to Williams. But Chez is used to that. He has fought taller middleweights, and virtually every light heavyweight he's been in with has been taller than he has. It has not affected him so far. He is making his fourth title defense of the IBF crown. The rules under the International Boxing Federation, 15 rounds the championship distance. No standing eight count. Three knockdown rule does apply. In other words, if a fighter is knocked down three times in one round, then the fight is over. Ten ounce gloves will be used with the attached thumb. That's a safety measure. Three judges will do the scoring at ringside. And now let's go to our ring announcer, Chuck Hull. This is the go main event of the evening. 15 rounds of boxing for the IBF light heavyweight championship of the world. The officials have signed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next battle of the night. The judges are Glenn Hamada, Michael Vienna, and Dalton Shirley. Your referee is Carlos Padilla. Introducing, in the blue corner,
fighting out of Mansfield, Ohio. Weighing in at 172 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 21 wins, four defeats, two draws, and 13 KOs. He is rated number one in the world by the IBF. He is the challenger, Prince Charles William. And in the red corner, from Wanaki, New Jersey, weighing 173 and three quarter pounds. championship action, the IBF title, Bobby Chez in his uh, fourth Chez defense. Chez Williams will go to box for 50 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of foul. Don't throw any punches during the break. Is that clear? Don't be fiddle. You are be responsible for any misbehavior or assistance seconds. Is that understood? Seconds come up, fighting. That is referee Carlos Padilla from Las Vegas with the final instructions. Bobby Chez 32-1. and one. Charles Williams 21-4-2, and, and you saw the height advantage for Charles Williams at 6-2 to Chez's 5-10. I like the stare down that both of them was given just before the bell, just before they came out. Chez has defended his crown successfully against Willie Edwards, David Sears, and Diamond Jim McDonald's last fight on May 3rd of this year. Well, Williams looks to be punching already really hard. He, he walked right out of that corner full of pep. Bobby better be careful in there today. That sequence that they got, you know, but it takes it away from your concentration. So you're more or less trying to be out there looking pretty than, than anything else. That is some outfit that Jez has got here for his Las Vegas appearance. He looks like uh, he fits right in with all of the neon out on the strip here in Las Vegas. Well, you know what I like? Jez do a nice right hand to the body of the end. Just uh, stay right. Wiggins looks like a pretty good fighter, Marvin. Yeah, he looks. He looks very confident, I, I tell you, and I was worried about him this morning. Double jab. Hands up good and high, good defense. But you know this what I know? This all in the first minute. Yeah, neither one of them has broken a sweat, though. Don't forget, Chaz was knocked down by Willie Edwards in the first round before coming back to stop him. Well, there's already redness under the left eye of Bobby Chaz. But Chaz, Chaz is very crafty. That's what's good. That's what he got going in his favor. Charles Williams, born in Columbus, Mississippi. Especially in New Jersey. You know how New Jersey is. Going up in New Jersey ain't easy. New Jersey, the home of Bobby Chen. I'd like to know how much those trunks of Bobby Chez weigh. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly, if they, uh, this fight goes long enough where he's really collecting some sweat, he's got to be carrying around a little weight. Good jams by Williams. Williams is throwing real heavy good punch. snappy jams. Nice good job. combination by Chez and a good return. Nice. Well, that They're both throwing heavy punch that could indicate a little problem for Bobby Chez because he nailed Williams with two good punches and Williams punched right back. But you know, Bobby Chez is not moving his head the way he should. He's just moving that head side to side. That's how Williams is getting off with his jab. Body punching at Chez backed up Williams for the first time. This is a war, and it's only round one. I like when you say that word, war. Right hand by Chez. Two good right hands by Chez. Chez seems to be going real good in here, I tell you. You know how it is when you become champion, you get very confident. Boy, that, when both guys throw like right hands like that, Marv, if one guy lands, it's all over. It's both gambling. See, now that's the way Chez should be moving his head. Under the 30 second mark in round one. I think uh, with, what Williams should be doing is try to box more. He's trying to take Bobby Chez out there and then... The, and the, He's getting hit as he's trying to take a gamble. See, that's what he should be doing, boxing. Final seconds of the first round. Bobby Chez and Charles Williams. Williams with a jab at the bell. Well, some good things from both guys. Well, they established themselves very well in that first round.
Marvin, I like that double jab of, uh, of Charles Williams. If he keeps pumping that jab, it's going to have an effect on Bobby. He's going to start swelling up. Right, that's what he should be doing. I think he should be jabbing more and, and moving a little bit more. Because he's got, he's got the reach, and he's got a nice right hand. Instead of trying to go to the body, by going to the body, it means that he's close. All right. He's close enough to be hit. Getting a little chilly out here, you know what I mean, Gil? That can affect the fighters also. Well, it's, it's nice for the fighters because the fighters, if they're not warmed up enough in the inside, they can't create problems. I like the way this Williams leaves his corner. Comes out all business right away. Maybe he should, maybe he should try moving around a little bit more and using his boxing techniques. That's what I'm saying behind that. He's moving in, which, which is nice. Williams is stepping in, but he can, like you said, use that jab enough right there. That can create a lot of problems for Bobby. Chez keeps fighting the way he's fighting. Williams is going to take him apart. Bobby has to gamble. He's the shorter guy. He has to slip that jab and start throwing those hard combinations. He can't stay on the outside with Williams. That's what Bobby's not doing. You can hear from the crowd. They're yelling to Bobby to move his head. He's very stationary. His head is very stationary. And Williams should use that jab as much as he can, maybe create and open up a cut somewhere in Bobby's face. Well, he sure is using it. The caliber of competition for Williams to this point has not been real high. His best win over James Salerno and another over Jeff Lampton, but otherwise, not a lot of tough guys, but he certainly has come along rapidly in the latter stages of his career. He looks like a very polished fighter tonight. He does. He looks very ready for this fight. He's ready. I like what he did. He shot a, a, a left jab to the body, and then he, and he hooked it off. He hooked off the left toe. Now he just tried to throw a right hand over chest jab. Now what he has to do is come back with that straight right hand. Nice body shot by Bobby. That's what he's got to do. Use that jab, Williams. Right trying hand. to figure something out, and while he's trying to figure it out, Williams is doing a job on him with that jab. Bobby, Williams. Bobby has to take, as you said, Marv, before a good offense is the best defense, and I think that's what Chez has to do. He has to let it all hang out. That's right. You got to think about his defense instead of just going all offense. Two good jabs right. and a right hand by Chez. But Tim and but Williams came right back with a right hand. Yeah, he rolled real pretty with it, you know. That's an indication that Bobby may be in a little trouble. If he can't hurt Williams with that right hand, it's going to be a long night. His head is nice and stationary. Williams got to come back with a straight right hand. Williams look like a very polished fighter out here tonight, if you said. Nice. Yeah, jab and hook off the jab. You do a jab and hook off, but that's only two punches. And then came back with a, Williams is scoring points. Should have came back with a straight right hand right after that. In round number two, scheduled for 15, remember, under IBF championship rules. Still to come, Hearns and Roldan. I'm very impressed about this fight. I didn't think it was going to look this good.
be surprised if Williams can storm last this round out. Williams in all kinds of trouble covering up, but still taking shots. And he's trying to punch back. Yes, he is. Trying now to fight he is. Back. But he got trying nailed again. This is where you have to learn how to grab and hold. Double 
there begins. Under a minute to go, round four. Probably turn southpaw there for a minute. Well, any doubts about Williams' conditioning have certainly been erased as he was nearly out at the end of round number two and early in round three. Took more punishment, then turned that round around entirely. Looks like none of that ever happened to him at this point. Well, Bobby's trying to keep the head still again now. Okay, bring it up, bring it up. Stand up, stand up. Chez has to count for those jabs. He just can't let this right. guy keep getting right that's hand over right the jab. Hand. That's, that's, well, what he that's what he's got to throw him on, Joe. Now come back with the right hand. Bobby's got his, his head hunting a lot. He's got to go with that body because he's a shorter man. Big right hand by Chez. He'll be ready to pick it up a little bit. Yeah. I don't think he can handle it. Okay. You got to beat him to the punch. Okay. Don't wait for him. Right. You understand what I mean? Do what you got to do. You know what to do. Do we show you everything to do? Well, do it for us. That's all we ask. Do what we chose. All right? Hold on. Yeah, okay. Slip the jab and punch in the body. Yeah, major pain. <laughs> I know where. You see me? Slip the jab, Bobby. You understand me? Slip the jab. Slip the jab and left hook to the body. Put the jab and right hand to the body. Yeah. Don't, the head's going to be too big. The head's going to move. Nothing else is going to move. A little swelling over the right eye of Bobby Chez and uh, being attended to is trainer Tommy Parks with the instructions. There you see our copy punch stats through round number four. Williams has been the busier boxer and that's his style. Despite the fact that he was in trouble late in round number two and early in round three. I'm surprised that Williams had only landed six more punches because it seems to me like he landed 106 more with those jabs. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Yes, three, four, four, five, six. Six jabs in a row by Williams. Seven, eight. Are you doing the copy box for us? Well, I, I tell you, Tim, you know, <laughs> it's what's happening. And they told Bobby he has to slip that jab and, and hook to the body and slip the jab and throw right hands to the body. Number one, he's not slipping the jab. And number two, he's not hooking. with that eye all puffy like that. Well, they, gotta, they have to get some pressure on that eye, ice and pressure. Right, right hand by Williams scores. What they use now is that iron metal. And, and swell. It says end swell, and I guess it does end the swelling. That's the idea. Keeps it from puffing up and that ice on it. And yes. ice, nice metal ice thing and put it right on there. Jez is not well. punching enough. He has to punch him. He's got to go more to the body because this kid here is head hunting a lot. Bobby don't have the uh, technique to, to move the head enough. Now the body. And then he got inside Chez and he just yeah. stops punching. That's when he has to do the damage, when he gets close. Well, Charles is uh, the much taller. You know, Williams is the much taller. And the more effective one with the jab, Bobby knows he's got to get in the inside. That was that right hand of Chez. But he backed up out of there. Thank you. 
At the end of round number five, and a, another round on my scorecard, at least, for Charles Williams. Oh boy, you know. Get iron. Put the ice bag. Bobby Chez corner, and they're working on that right eye. All right, now what swelling. you're doing is you're holding your head still when he's punching. You got to slip and go under that jab with left hook to the body. Okay? Now he's reaching in with that. He's reaching in with that jab. You can just bend your knee. Bend your knee and go to that body. You're pulling up and you're pulling up these jabs. Okay? okay. Now if you're getting jabs coming back, then park your hand. All right. Then park your right hand in front of your face. Okay. Tim, you have a whole minute to work on an eye. If he has a swelling like that, they should have that end swell on there with pressure for the entire minute. You don't tickle his eye with it. You use pressure and keep the pressure on. Yeah, it didn't look like they were accomplishing much at all uh, with uh, what's called the end swell. You need the pressure with the end swell and the cold. And you have to keep it there. Take advantage of the full minute. 10-15 seconds. There's a lot of swelling around the right eye of Bobby Chaz. Vision is still good, but how long that'll last, we'll find out as things progress here. The excellent jab of Charles Williams will be pecking away at it, no doubt. Well, you know, for a taller man, a shorter man has to go to the body more than the taller man. Well, he's being told to do that in the corner, Marvin, and there's no response from him. He's in the corner. He doesn't, doesn't look very confident. Well, he's looking like he was losing his composure, but now he's coming back. Hmm? and he has to make a more out of this. He's not going to outpoint Williams. He can't get away from that jab, and that's a very frustrating feeling. Bobby Chez, fourth defense of his IBF title. Hoping for the big payday against Thomas Hearns. His eye like his cut, too. I'm not sure. Like a little thin, thin cut on the eye. He's allowing Williams to, to do what he wants to do.
here you're looking at Bobby Chez trying to defend his crown against Prince Charles Williams from Mansfield, Ohio, who has had the best of it despite being knocked down in round number two. Well, you know, by being knocked down, it made Williams work harder than I think. And that sometimes could be, uh, you know, could be the, it's the best thing for Williams. Bobby is staying exactly where he should not be staying. He stays right, right in on the range of Williams' jab. He's either got to get inside, move to the side, but just don't stand there and eat those jabs all night. Well, he's got to start moving from side to side. I think he's getting tired also. I think he's getting a little frustrated. A little jab to frustrate. He looks very frustrated. But he, he has to let it all hang out. He either has to do it or don't do it. Williams can't miss with his jab. trying to figure him out all the time he's trying to figure him out the other guy's scoring points he's popping that jab and you know, also know Prince Charles now is starting to box now he's moving he's using his legs now and that could create a lot of problems let's see what else he probably has if he tries that well, now, now Jez is bouncing they help Jez something has to happen What he's got to do, keep the pressure right on him, keep throwing those punches. Yes, he had one by Williams, good combination. Nothing disturbs Williams, he doesn't get upset, he just keeps pumping away. And that's go round seven, getting nice. Right. Right. Well, you know Bobby Shea's a very tough customer. Hey, that left hook of the land, it could have been the end, there's Jessica. Shea's coming right back now. Be a bulldog in there. Gotta be a bulldog in there. Do another home run for him, Mom. But it missed. Gotta get down low. And those knees. Well, he's bouncing now, Chaz. He's trying something a little different. I think it's gonna help him too much. From, uh, Williams is nice jab. He's got a beautiful jab. Williams is taking the fight to Chaz. He's not afraid of him at all. Nice. Good uppercut by Williams. Beautiful it's been a good mount by Chess. Best mount so far. Beautiful right wow. uppercut. Now you got to come back. you got to repeat. Well, it was a better round for Chess, and Clancy is scoring it for him. But I think, again, it's one of those things, if you look at the three minutes, in my judgment, Williams won the round. So how do the judges see it? Do they remember the latter part of it? Give it to Chess. Bring him close to the bite. Don't raise up. Every move I thought he started to move, he did better. But I thought that Chez landed some very hard punches that round. Very effective punches. Little sponge, that's right. Give me a little bass, John. Everybody with him. Hold up, raise up. Yeah, they, they, again, they don't have He can't have do it. Reach it. He can't. All right. Do it for me, All baby. Right. Let's go. Well, they're fired up over there. That's for sure. They got to be pleased with his body when so far. And his nickname is Smiley. When you're in close. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Ray McLean, Bill Hayward, Leon Muhammad in the corner of Charles Williams. Trainer Marty Feldman, manager Jerry Stapleton. Nearby, cheering him on. Punches 
scheduled for 15, and the pressure clearly on the champion Chez, and the doctor is worried about his vision. Nice shot, Paul. Now what Charles had to do is put his punches together. Nice right hand by Williams. Gym workout. 
he's cut, cut and on the chin. The eye is closing. Well, you get to know what a, what a championship fight is about. You gotta go all out. Well, he tried to nail him with that right hand again. It worked so good earlier. So I throw that overhand right. Looks like a little snap has gone out of his hand. Yeah, well, he's, if he put the speed together like he's doing right now, he can hang in there. And stay a little closer to the charge. He's got to get in the inside of that jab. He's staying right on the outside of it. He's got to get in the inside. Slip it, get in the inside. Well, he hasn't bent his knees. He hasn't bobbed the weave in the entire fight. That's what you have to do. Exactly. To move, to move inside a jab. Both side of his face is swollen. Back, and back, back up again. In, in a straight line. Back Big up right up. hand by Williams. Back right that up. Was right there. That one hurt. got that wobble jab at the bell. Impressive round for Williams, even though Chez rallied briefly. Williams is unable to keep the play. We're good save. How you feel? What? Well, that's what he's got to do. You have to take it away from the champion. You have to be aggressive in there. You got to want it. I just want to watch you to do this round. Go back to your jab. Your jab would be good. Don't worry about that. Let's go back here near the final seconds of the round. There was that left of the ear. Big right hand by Williams behind it. Beautiful combination, straight jab, and there's that vicious uppercut again. And that wobble, Chaz, the uppercut, wasn't ready for it, and then the bell sounded. And it looks like it's all over, it is. They have stopped the fight. Dr. Flip Pomansky, in concert with the referee, Carlos Padilla, and Charles Williams. I don't think he could quite believe that he wasn't having to go out for the 10th round, but he is the new IBF light heavyweight champion. Prince Charles Williams from Mansfield, Ohio, has become a tough Philadelphia fighter and has won himself the world title in the fourth defense by Bobby Chez. And he was clearly the better man, knocked down at the end of round two. He came back and dominated the action from that point forward. Exactly what I was saying in the beginning. You can hit a guy, put him on Queer Street, then hit him again with that hard punch and wake him right up. And that's exactly what he did. And ever since from that point on, I see Williams winning. Come on, baby. So there is Bobby Chez. Uh, disappointed crowd around him being attended to there. Tremendous uh, lump over his right eye. And uh, they could have used that ice bag a little earlier, perhaps. But Charles Williams was the better man. And he's all right. Go up and get the announcement from Chuck Hall. Hey, I wasn't going to let him get hurt. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of the ringside physician, Dr. Flip Omensky, referee Carlos Padilla stops the bout at the end of the ninth round. The winner by a KO in the ninth round and new IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Prince Charles Williams. champion Prince Charles Williams. Get that mouthpiece out so you can talk, Charles. Take your time here. Everybody in this corner plenty excited. That's understandable. Charles, Charles, what a tremendous victory for you. When I saw you just uh, earlier, about a couple hours ago, you seemed very confident, and you certainly came in here and took the play away. When you were knocked down there at the end of round number two, did you imagine that you could possibly come back the way you did? Yeah, definitely. First of all, I said, Thank to my mighty Jesus Christ for giving me the spirit of power to win this fight. And thank to my trainer and everyone that was involved in all my sparring partners. When Bobby hit me and knocked me down, I knew he was the champion. And it gave me more courage to get up and fight harder if I want to be a world champ. And I get up and I fought hard and thanks God that I came out victorious. When you were planning for this fight in training and so on, did you see it going the way it did? Forget the knockdown, but the course of the fight, the way that you were able to out-jab and take control of them. Is that what you expected? Yeah, I expected to come in. I know I had the hand speed and the punching power was on. But he surprised me with the punching power. He was in great condition. But thanks to my training, Billy, he got me in great excellent shape for this fight. And I knew I had 
the hand speed and the punching power on him. And I know sooner or later that I'll go catch him. But when he knocked me down, he surprised me with the punching power that he had. I didn't expect for him to hit that hard. Well, now, of course, once you got that lump over his eye, we're going to go back into the fight, show you some of the action from it. Here, here, is, uh, here is early on in the fight when, uh, when you were knocked down by Bobby Chez. A big right hand wobbled you, and another right hand will send you down here. And it looked like uh, maybe it was curtains for Charles Williams early. Yeah, but I was in excellent shape. Like I said, thanks to Mighty G. It, had to be. it gave me the spinning power to get off to win this fight. Well, you sure had to be in great shape. It was a tribute to your conditioning and your stamina because it could well have been over there. The round ended, and even early in round number three, he came out. Of course, he saw you were still not quite back to form and went after you, but suddenly you turned it around. Did he get a little arm weary in that exchange at the early part of round number three? Yeah, really. I think as he knocked me down and I got up and started punching back strong, I took his hard from him. Well, I think so. you did. Now, here's late in the fight when you were totally in control. Tremendous uppercut. Marvelous Marvin Hagler commented on that great uppercut. You used that very effectively throughout the fight. Oh, yeah, definitely. I worked on that all in the fight. And as I watched the tape of Bobby, I seen all the guy that he was fighting wasn't throwing uppercut. He would be overcome with. When he cover up, he leave his hand open for the uppercut. And that's all I was working on in the gym. Girls, you were the challenger. You were the underdog. The talk was maybe of a Chez Hearns fight. And now suddenly it's Charles Williams in the picture. Would you hope that Hearns will come back up to the light heavyweight? Yeah, definitely. I think I proved to the world that I am a great champ. I beat the best champ in the light heavyweight division. I take my hat off to Bobby. Bobby is a great fighter. And I feel right now, Hearns, Hagler, whoever, Rodans want to come up. I'm ready for him. Uh, I feel it's my time, and I'm the best in the lightweight well, division. Well, you certainly proved the IBF championship here tonight. Congratulations to you. Thank Prince you. Charles Williams, can we get Bobby over? Can we get Bobby over? Bobby? Bobby Chaz and... Uh, I'm not surprised that he agreed to come over, despite uh, what must be a devastating uh, loss for him, and he's got the sunglasses on already. But, uh, Bobby, uh, you you had the guy down at the end of round two. It looked like Williams might be finished for the night. But were you surprised he was able to bounce back like that? Well, he wasn't down, and he jumped in to give him an eight count. When there's no such thing as a standing eight count in Las Vegas. So I was a little upset with that. I, I used a little more energy than I wanted to, so I relaxed for a little bit, knowing I had two rounds, one pretty good. And uh, I got hit with a left hook in the eye and, and it closed like immediately. And it's not the vision that bothers me as much as the pain. Every time I got hit in it, it was just more than I could take. Well, the one I thing... I stayed there and tried for another six or seven rounds, but, uh, you know, it's, it was, I think it was the more, it was the wiser thing to do than jeopardize my health. Come back and fight another day. Well, that's right. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, he had an excellent jab, and of course, once you had the, the eye swelling up, it was a good target for him. Well, I had trouble seeing it, and, uh, you know, it's, it's right. The jab's coming from my right side. I had a little trouble seeing it, and uh, I caught him early. I had him in trouble if there was another 15 seconds and first round fight's over, but uh, sometimes a little luck and timing are part of the elements. It wasn't my day. Uh, you know, those days are bound to happen. I trained hard. It had nothing to do with my conditioning or whatnot. Uh, again, I felt there was no, there is no such thing as a standing eight in Vegas. He wasn't down. He was on the ropes in trouble. And Carlos Padilla came in and gave an eight count. He wasn't down, and he did do the wrong thing there. All right, Bobby. Well, now, of course, uh, only your second loss, and as you've already indicated, uh, better to save your health here, not try to go on with the eye in that condition. Obviously, you're expecting to come right back. Well, yeah, I've been beat before. Uh, only know, once. With, with the ham show fight. <laughs> and uh, the first loss is much more devastating. At this particular point, I lose a title, so, you know, I have some, you know, I, I'm really dejected about that. But again, I've been in the business for a lot of years, 15 years since I'm 10 years old, seven years of pro, i got another five years. I'll be back, and uh, hopefully Williams will still have it, so it'll be some sweet revenge. Just gives me something else to shoot for. All right, Bobby. Well, it was a courageous display once the eye was uh, so badly swollen. We look forward to seeing you back in action. I'll be back. Bobby Chaz, the now former IBF champion, a graceful uh, interview with us here in uh, the face of his defeat at the hands of Charles Williams, and all hail to Prince Charles Williams from Mansfield, Ohio. He is the new IBF light heavyweight champion. Still to come, tonight's main event, Thomas Hearns against Juan Roldan for the vacant WBC World Middleweight Championship. <laughs>